Hello, uh, I'm Stuart Foxall. I've uh, been salmon fishing for probably 40 odd years now. Uh, th this is just a presentation of the five uh, best early Scottish spring salmon flies that I suggest would be worthwhile having in your box. The first one is a monkey. Really good fly. Spring salmon have a tendency, if they're holding somewhere, to sit in very slow moving, deep, not so much deeper, but slow moving water that they feel secure in and that they don't use much energy to stay still. That movement will induce fish in slow moving water. So that's one to have. You can also get them in different colors. You don't just have to have black wing monkeys. One of my favorite monkey patterns, it's called the tummel monkey. And that's just yellow and orange. Uh, the orange wing and the yellow, I think suits highland rivers where there's some peat stain. That color really pops in tea colored water. So uh, I've always got some of those in my box and when there's a bit of tinge in the water, this has been deadly for me over, over the years. The next fly I definitely would not be without, gold body willy gun. This is better in boilier water uh, where fish might be sitting just as they move in from one pool to another, uh, just having a breather. So these flies caught thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions of fish over the years. You know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. It's just a mix of yellow, orange, and black bucktail with a gold body. I'll put jungle cock, but that's really good. Another good fly in spring, which a lot of people won't go with that, and this is just a slight twist on it, is called a tosh. Once again, it's yellow and black. Normally it's done in quarters all the way around the tube, but this has actually got feelers. So it's yellow bucktail, black bucktail wing, silver body, and we've got those feelers there. Once again, this fly will fish in the faster water, and with these little feelers there, if I start to twitch it through the slower water, there's gonna be some movement there. So these are also, uh, when I tie toshes, I tend to fish them like this. Uh, it's always useful because it's a bit different to the other ones. This is a pattern once again in those same colors that I use in colored water. Uh, it's called a welder, uh, and the reason it's called a welder is it's got hackle at the back, it's got bucktail as a long tail at the back, and then it's got fox as an overwing with cock hackle at the front. And I had a fish off this river last year, 1st of March, on that particular fly, uh, believe it or not. Uh, it's it's a good fly to have in transition water, which once again, that's somewhere where these spring salmon like to sit. It's just where the pool starts to draw at the tail. They'll come in through a long chute, come over the lip of the pool, and they'll just sit where they feel that current start to pick up. So this fly fishes the faster water and the slower water, because I can work it. In the faster water, this comes alive. In the slower water, the fox starts to fish. So that's, that's a very useful fly. Any colours, willy gun colours, black and chartreuse colours, posh tosh colours, anything that you like, tie them in this design, it's well worth having. As the season progresses a bit more, a fly that a friend of mine came up with called the lightning bolt. You see there it's chartreuse, gold body, like a willy gun wing just tied on top with chartreuse badger and grey hackle at the front and a bit of flash. This fly has caught hundreds of fish, well, thousands of fish in the last few years. It's, it's got a real knack of pulling fish when other flies just haven't worked. And I think part of the reason of that is it's not a really gaudy fly. Uh, it tends to hide in the water when you're fishing. So I think that the fish don't see it until the fly is actually here and they just snatch at it. So the lightning bolt, and I also fish them later in the year on doubles as well. Uh, late March, when the water starts to drop and there's a few more fish about, they might have seen a few bigger flies, so they get spooked by bigger flies. Having a few doubles like that in the, as the lightning bolt, really good patterns to have. The other one that I find is, is good, uh, and I don't use it enough really, is another pattern, and I think this was actually tied by him, by Grant Morrison, off the spay. 
It's a bit like a monkey, but it's also got bucktail in there on the tail. So once again, it fishes in fast water, it fishes in slow water. And this is called an oyster catcher. It's got the orange of the beak, the white bucktail, orange bucktail in the tail, white hackle, black hackle. It's the same colours as an oyster catcher. Grant likes to tie it with a big red head. He feels that that's a bit of a trigger point for fish, which is, um, you know, uh, who can argue with that? We, we like to have trigger points on flies and, and that definitely is. Uh, once again, this fly works all the way through really in smaller sizes, all the way through the season. So uh, Grant seems to think that it works best when the oyster catchers actually start to call. So that would probably be March, April time, but there you go, oyster catcher. They're my five flies. Uh, obviously you can go bigger. There's a welder bigger with a cone to suit bigger water conditions and you can go smaller. But as I say, I, I think to have half inch, three quarter, one inch flies. And then if you need bigger flies in bigger water, colder water, what you can do is just stack patterns. Uh, you know, who's to say that wouldn't work in the spring, especially on bigger rivers. So, you know, there you go. There's something to play with. Thank you.